Peace and blessings, Israel. May the Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless you all. My name is Brother Aram of the Boston Church, located in the Boston region. All praises. And tonight, we're going to go over a topic concerning the criminalization of our youth. Right? The criminalization of Israel's youth, the children of Israel, which is us. All right, and so let's start with a prayer and we'll get right on into the scriptures. All praise us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Christ, have mercy upon us. Grant unto us your Holy Spirit, that we may receive thy word, and that we may learn and grow as a people, and that we may be able to return back to the proper people thou hast intended. All through Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, Israel, so the criminalization of our youth, I mean... This topic here, <laughs> we can teach for 10 years straight. There's so many ways you can go to, uh, and directions you can go with this particular uh, topic. But I just kind of want to get a root base foundation how we even get here. You know, how do we get to this particular predicament as a people? So I want to go back to the writings of Moses, who Moses being a prophet of the Lord, and the spirit prophesied of uh, these things happening before they uh, actually uh, came into place. Or how should I say, actually came into being a reality. So Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, let's start there. Okay, the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. All praises. So it says here in the fifth verse, we want Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, fifth verse. And Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. He says, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land where the ye go to possess it. So as Moses is, is rehashing the history, um, throughout the course of those 40 years in the wilderness, right? They're coming up upon the end of the 40 years by the time you get to the book of Deuteronomy. And they're about to enter the promised land. So he's like you to remember the statutes, right? That's the many laws of the Bible. And judgments, that's the many penalties that are attached to the law. Let's say someone steal, that's the statute, don't steal. Okay, then what's the judgment if he steal? Then depending on what was stolen and, and the circumstances, right? All the details, he had to repay. You see what I'm saying? Okay, if someone broke the Sabbath, death. If someone murdered another man, death, right? So we had many laws, right? So the Ten Commandments still stand today, which includes the Sabbath. The dietary law still stands today what to eat, what not to eat, right? So we would, we learned all that. Six verse, keep therefore and do them. So we weren't just, Moses wasn't just like a, a lovely song. We were supposed to hear it, keep it and do them. For this is your what? Wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, right? So that was our wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations, Israel. That's what made us a wise people. That's what made us distinct from all the other nations. That's what made us that circumcised nation, meaning the nation that was given the divine laws of God, which then in turn made the heathen, the non-Israelite peoples, the uncircumcision, right? because they were never given the divine laws of God. They're not the masters of the universe. We, the Most High made us the masters of this earth and of this universe. But it was contingent on us dealing in that wisdom. You go away from that wisdom, you become the direct opposite. You become the most foolish people upon earth. See, so Moses was, was trying to put them in mind. Listen, the Most High gave you the top wisdom, Israel. Right? So it said, I'll read it again. 
6 verse, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So the reason why they said that is because they had to. Okay, we, we didn't give them a reason to look at us the way they look at us now, right? Because you have to understand as much as people can hate on you and people can be envious and covetous, that's on them. It's how you carry yourself. So when we were dealing in this wisdom, they were forced to, to acknowledge how we get down as a nation. Them Israelites up in, in the land of Israel, man, them so-called blacks and so-called Hispanics, that's what they call us today. But back then they had to acknowledge, oh, them is God's people. The sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Because we dealt in that wisdom. Our men were orderly. Our sisters were orderly. The children was orderly, raised right in the law. So he said, for what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them? As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? which I set before you this day. See that? So no other nation had this top wisdom, right? So it's less us know. Now we got to ask the question, why would you go to something else? Why would you go to the heathen for their so-called philosophies? They so-called <laughs> policies and culture and, and ideologies. You, you, you know, you're demoting yourself. You're degrading yourself. You're going backwards. So he said, only take heed to thyself. Be warned, Israel. Take heed, be warned. And keep thy soul diligently. Diligent, meaning like painstaking effort. See? Lest thou what? Forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. See that? Teach them. These laws, statutes, and commandments. Why teach the sons? Because the generations to come are important. And if you don't set the tone with the youth and they're not taught, what's going to happen? We're going to be a destroyed people. And that's exactly what happened, right? So he said, especially, meaning one of the main things you teach the children, the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, meaning Mount Sinai, when the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together and I will make them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth and that they may teach their children. So you see the importance every time the Most High talk about commandments, he talk about the youth. He talk about the youth, man. So it wasn't just parents teaching their children. The whole community was raising children. That's how we got down when we was in our righteousness. There was no children running up on uh, the aged and, and robbing them and, steal, and, and beating them down or, or somebody speaking ill against, you know, uh, one of our people like that. They were in order. And anybody got out of line, it got handled, you see. So this society encourages the opposite because you got to know what Satan means. Satan means adversary, which means opposite. How can I get those Israelites to fall? Hmm. Get them away from the wisdom. Trick them to think that there's other wisdom, better wisdom out there. Let's, let's follow the so-called wisdom of the heathen. Right? And they over there following idols, which can either speak, <laughs> walk, talk, hear, reason, understand. So the scriptures say, he that follow idols becometh like the idol, deaf, dumb, and blind. So the devil said, let's trick them. And what happened? Parents decide to no longer teach their children. Children decide they, they know, they grown. I already know. Get off my case, dad. And Israel became a cesspool. Right? So Moses warned them. Okay. We didn't even get to the white man ruling over us. We just talking about when, before we even got in the land, we was getting warned. So now let's head to Deuteronomy 7. First, uh, the, um, let's read. Let's get at the sixth verse. So Deuteronomy 
the seventh chapter, right? And about the sixth verse. Okay. So it says here, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So when he say you are holy people, that's going back to him, his character. He done made you like him, his holiness, right? Hold that. I'll show you what he mean by that, right? I'll show you what he mean. When you, he said he made you a holy people, meaning we was made to be like the most high. Holy, not do what you want, when you want. Get into Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, uh, this secular Christianity, which is really sun worship to the, to Baal. He ain't tell us to do that, right? He ain't tell us to think we smart, get a PhD and a master's degree and everything like that. That's above the scriptures, but our people do it, you know? Excuse me, I'm going the other wrong way. I want Leviticus 19. Head to Leviticus 19. But see, our people, and I'll give you, I'll give you an example of that. When the Greeks came into power, according to prophecy, that was prophecy being fulfilled that Esau was supposed to have a certain time to rule. So when they started, their first family to rule wasn't the Spaniards or the French, it was the Greeks. And you saw our people start leaving the scriptures and going to the customs of the Greeks, which is idols, right? And nobody, you know, forced them. So they were willingly heading that way. And when they, and, and so the only ones that wasn't Following that, they were the ones getting forced and getting killed and made a spectacle in the streets. But the ones who willingly was joining this so-called new movement of wisdom coming out of Athens, it's just a lot of, it was a mess. And the the men, women, and children no longer resemble what God created. We are holy people, man. So Leviticus 19, right? And I'll read the first two verses. We had Leviticus 19 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am what? Holy. See that, Israel? So when he said, I made you a holy people, meaning I made you to to understand and resemble me because I'm holy. That's what it is. And then as you read the rest of the chapter, you'll start seeing what that holiness entails. It entails, ye shall fear every man, his mother and his father. The Lord was big on that because that's who's going to keep the message going to the youth. So that parenting, the marriages, the sanctity of marriage, the understanding of a father's role, a mother's role, all that was important so that the youth could be in a proper place to succeed. So understand what I'm saying, because if you understand where we should be in the destination, then you have a better understanding of how the devil tries to thwart that, reverse that, destroy marriages. Don't even have them, let them have a concept of father and mother. Have them resent their fathers, right? Their absent fathers. Have them resent their mothers who are on drugs or drunk or sell their body. Have a resentment. Have the kids out there going for self. Right. Being in the in the uh, communities, in the hood, scrounging for bread, that's going to make them resent their parents. That's going to give them a, a thing where they have to survive without their parents. So the devil is behind all these tactics and he uses his vessels to do these things. Right. And it's going to lead the youth right into the criminalization, right into the open target vulnerability where you end up in them prisons, Israel. But we got to establish how it's supposed to be. So part of his holiness, that parenting was on point. You had to raise the youth right. We don't care what a thousand people are doing. You, my son, you're going to do it the way the Lord said. That's how we were supposed to get there. And then you read the rest of this Leviticus 19. It talked about keeping the Sabbaths, right? You shall fear every man his mother and his father and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. So this is all his holiness. That's the holiness we learn, right? And you keep going down, keep going down. Leviticus 19, you get to the law pertaining to brotherly love, right? The 17th and 18th verse talks about brotherly love. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. 
thou shalt in any wise rebuke, meaning you have the right in any way, wise means way, to correct or rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer, meaning allow, sin upon him. So when we saw our brothers going astray, we had the right to say, hey, let me rap with you for a minute. Okay, now the Most High don't want us to do these things, young brother. Okay, and then you get, a, you know, and that's how we had that respect. And we, you know, we try to deal with people where we talking to them and not at them. Because we had that wisdom. Thou shalt not avenge. So if your brother sinned against you, you weren't supposed to retaliate. Well, that's all that go on in the hood. Black on black crime. Nor bear in, in any grudge against the children of our people. So that's that bitterness and that, that hatred. Right? So notice he said against the who? Children of thy people. This law was very specific, starting from the first and second verse. It was talking about Israel being holy, like the way the Lord was holy. But see, these religions done lied. And the Most High never gave us religion. He gave us his law. Okay, so none of these religions told the truth yet. This law on brotherly love was specific to the children of your people. How are you going to love other nations? You ain't learned to love your people. It's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Right? So they got a nerve to teach us our law and make it open-ended because that was part of the slavery and the captivity. Love this lying, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, uh, uh, so-called Jesus and love anybody that look like him. And no matter what they do, you show that love. But when it comes to your people, you are no good blacky nigger. And that's what they instilled in our people when they brought us on them slave ships. Then when you actually read the law and find out you the children of Israel, God's people, and you find out that you were supposed to be loving your people, the children of thy people. So let's read it again. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, Israel, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself so who's the neighbor as yourself it was always the children of your people it's there in clear, clear plain or clear english then he said i am the lord that's part of the holiness israel so the devil say let's get them away from that holiness let's teach them to hate one another let's teach them that let's jam them up and, and mess up their whole conditions and then trick them through that religion and as long as they think Jesus is is, is a, a, a white man, they going to blame all their issues on themselves. They're going to hate the next man that look like them. And they're going to, as much as we beating them, castrating them, hanging them, we're going to have them in fear, but they're going to also, and through that fear, we're going to use that psychology, that Stockholm syndrome, where a person ends up, uh, how should I say, sympathizing and empathizing for their very oppressor. It ain't all that bad. He whooping the brakes off us, but he's still Jesus. But that nigger, oh, oh, uh, 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 what do you call him? Chicken George, man, you's a nigger. Get away from me. That's how they taught us. And it's the direct opposite of this holiness, man. So you can see where this is going. Once you get away from the holiness, you are open target to all the wiles and all the tricks of the devil. And he used the heathen to make moves on us. And the Lord allowed it because we didn't want to listen. Right? So going back, Deuteronomy 7. We back in Deuteronomy, right? But we want that 7th chapter. And we want the 6th verse. So it said, the, uh, For thou art in holy people, I mean, you was given law. Unto who? The Lord. He made you distinct from all nations. So you are holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Now this is the prophet Moses, right? So when the Lord say he got a chosen people and a special people, you see how they did us in these religions? No, God love everybody. That's a slick doctrine because it diminishes who God truly loves. You see, you could water down or, or change the message if you bombard the message. You see, if somebody, for example, if somebody crying for help, right? They in the alley, they just got robbed. And they laying out, they bleeding out, help, help. 
But a garbage truck come by, he making all that noise, picking up the trash and knocking the cans over. And do, 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 do. Can you hear that person? Most likely not because there's other noise that's distracting you. And that's how these the heathen get down. They don't necessarily have to hide you in a hole. The whole world know we in a bad condition, but if they could make other noise that, that silences your noise, silences your, uh, how should I say, oppression, right? And they got terms for it. It's called benign neglect. They What they did is they, they learned, they watch you, and they saw the uprising in the 60s. So they said, okay, we don't need that. We don't need a Malcolm X and, 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 and Martin Luther King Jr. and all. We don't need none. Mega Evers. We don't need that. We saw how that went. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to let them cry, moan, and groan, and make noise, but we're going to go a different way. And in the 70s, they switched the tactic. After they got rid of the, the leaders through the COINTEL program, right? Counterintelligence uh, program by the FBI. It was it was shortened to say COINTEL program, which included murdering and assassinating black leaders, Native American leaders, Hispanic leaders, right? That was going to try to raise the people up and bring a consciousness back to self-worth. We got to murder them, get rid of them. These guys, we, we tried to buy them and, and, and they not bought and paid for, so we got to get rid of them. So they switched the tactics after they got rid of the, the power source of these type of teachers and, and men. Not to say we subscribe by their message, we subscribe by the scriptures. But the government said, let's go to a thing of benign neglect. Benign mean like kind or, or, or good. So in other words, let's silence them out. Let's ignore these blacks and Hispanics. And that's what the 70s with high unemployment, Cops never come into to your neighborhoods if you was in trouble, right? Babies outside in soiled diapers, where they mama at? So we were, were ignored in the 70s, okay? Then the 80s, they went to a full assault again, the crack epidemic. See, So they were going to systematically make sure you don't do what you was doing in the 60s. Okay, which we're going to get to a scripture that, that, that covers all that, these type of tactics. There's a scripture that covers why these nations go to these tactics. Okay, so we are holy people, Israel. Don't ever let some lying religion, which the Lord never gave us religion, try to silence you out talking about we all people the same. No, we're not all the same. That would make Moses a liar. That would make the Lord a liar. When the Lord choose you, what are you talking about we all the same? We're not the same. So he said, the Lord, Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So he said in three different ways, he said the same thing. You're not the same as the people upon the earth. You are chosen people, they're not. You're a special people to the Lord, they're not. You're above the people upon the earth, they're not. Three different ways he said you distinct from these heathen. You understand? So because of these things, we were supposed to act in the proper fashion. He gave us a righteous law where men, women, and children were supposed to operate. Oh, praise us. So now what happens if we chose we ain't going to operate like that? Okay, he got scriptures for that too. Deuteronomy 28. We talk about the criminalization of our youth. Okay, check it out. We had Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. I'll read the 15th verse. A chapter, the whole chapter is good, but I'll read the 15th verse. Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. See that? So then Moses read a bunch of curses. That in due time, Israel didn't repent. The Lord was going to initiate these curses upon his own people, his own chosen people. Okay. And so there's two curses specifically. Where there's a few verses, right? I want to jump to the 32nd verse. Deuteronomy 28, 32. He said, thy sons and thy daughters, Israel, 
shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hands. So already it's talking about losing your youth to captivity, losing your youth to incarceration, to slavery, right? And look what happened. Just a, a small uh, sample of that because it was a repetitive curse where all the heathen had a chance to do this to us, okay? But the latest uh, munchkin that did this to us, this devil here is this so-called European, okay? From the time of the Greeks to the Greco-Roman Empire when it translated to the Romans all the way to now under um, Britain and America, okay? The, the, the European Western powers, we still under this curse where our sons and daughters are lost, right, to the heathen. Okay, and there was no might in our hand. Okay, they even wrote how to, uh, how should I say, capitalize on our captivity. Yo, Willie Lynch going around doing seminars. Hey, you get the best out of your slaves if you do it this way, do it that way. Uh, jack up the males. Because that's the leadership, that's the strength of their nation. And make it a whole matriarchal type system. Put the female in the spot she don't belong. So now let's make it about Big Mama. Right? And give Big Mama a spot in the big house. And make these males never learn how to be a proper male because they're being raised by women. And the woman, because she ain't got no sense in certain cases, we could use her emotions against her. And she's going to raise these strong, physically strong boys into mentally weak uh, young men. Because for fear that of what she saw, how they did her husband, castrate him, hang him, beat him, buck break him in front of his family, where they sodomize him in front of his family, all that. That's part of history they don't want to brag about. They hide that. Every time they show them little slave movies, they make sure they don't show that once. But that's how Hollywood get down. They do it every day, all day. They about that sodomy. Them Hollywood studios and them them corporate guys. They that's all they about is that sodomy and that satanic stuff. Okay, so they for that's that's strange, right? Not that we want to see it, but they see they don't like the world and know who they really are. And when they do show something, they that part of the unwritten rule in Hollywood. When you do show some type of slave movie, make sure you show, show a white savior. Because that's part of the psychology. You got to have at least one white character that wasn't down with the program. See, that'll trick the Negro. Say, they're not all that bad. See, uh, they're not all that. That's part of the thing. Because word I got, Danny Glover was supposed to do a movie. And uh, it was supposed to be about black folks. And the writers of the movie was told, oh, okay, hold on. This is too much blackness. You got to put in a white savior. And the writers of the movie said, we ain't doing none of that. That changes the authenticity of, our, of what we wrote. So they 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 uh, came to an impasse and they, they couldn't come and get the deal done. But that's how they get down. So you check them movies, uh, Roots and, and and some of them other slave movies. You always see always some uh, so-called European savior. Because that's part of the psychology that make them think there's still some hope, right? Because when you're getting beaten, tortured, and destroyed for so many years, you would want at least somebody to stand up for you. And they keep using that trick. And every time that somebody stand up for you is usually somebody with no power. That's also part of the, 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 the trick. It ain't never somebody with power that can make this thing long standing and help you. It's always somebody, a general store owner or, 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 or somebody that ain't got no power. Now, the people who got power, hmm, it's, it's, <laughs> how come they ain't never did help? Because that's, that's part of the trickery. So you think you're getting help, but he ain't got no true power. And, you, and so people believe what they see on that screen. And so they constantly in despair and hope that, nah, that, they can't all be like that. And you don't realize they don't have to all be like that. It's the ones in power 
That's all like that. And that's where it matters. So our trust have to be in the Lord and stop looking for hope through these heathen voting and carrying on. Yeah, I like this guy and that guy. One man ain't never changing this government. You can pick one European and, and model him to the attributes you may want as a president. Think about it. What kind of president you would want? Right? Honest. Look out for us. Stick to the Constitution. Everything I said going to get him killed. They ain't trying to have it. That's why they killed Kennedy. So people foolish. You pick the most upstanding guy, which we, we dreaming. He is going to be a threat in Washington, D.C., and they're going to ice him. So you got to understand your hope was never through politics, Israel. Now, this is a means to end while we're here, but your hope has always been in the Lord. So we read Deuteronomy 28.32. Let's jump down to about 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, right? The whole earth goes, say, man, the mighty Israelites, what happened to them? They fell. A proverb, you're going to be reduced to a proverb and a byword, right? Them little slick talk, right? Nigga and spick and, and, and uh, black, right? Black, <laughs> that's a byword because you're not that color, but they, and then you end up taking minority. Those are all bywords. You were reduced to that. Among who? All nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So was the Lord behind your downfall because we broke his law. Okay, skip down to 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go where? Into captivity, Israel. So Moses called it before there was a private prison industrial complex in the United States. It was already being said. You want to break the law of God? This what you opening yourself to. And what happens? We fall into the, we fall right into it. We fall into them stereotypes, right? And so there was a sister, I forget her name. Uh, I don't know, was it Duvernay or I forget her last name, but she did a good documentary called The 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment in this uh, United States was a trick law where let's keep slavery under another name. We're going to openly say we abolishing slavery, but it's still written in the, in the legal code that you can, you know, man is to be uh, under the terms of involuntary ser servitude. So they never wanted to put the word slavery in their writings. So they play with these other semantics, involuntary servitude, meaning you forced to serve. No man should be under that only unless he commits a crime. Now we can involuntarily make him serve. And so all that did was shift the narrative, you know, shifted. It. it ain't got rid of it. It just shifted it under another name, right? And these laws are still on the books. So let's criminalize the, the youth and we can keep them in a, a condition of slavery and oppression. And that's what they did. That's exactly what they did. Going back to uh, the late 18 and seven, 1800s, early 1900s and so on. When, the, when slavery switched and now you became a sharecropper and now you was no longer legally the property of a slave master, right? Because up until then, you, you, you know, a, a, a European saw you on the road, he might think twice before he jacked you up because you belong to some other European slave master. But once them laws shifted, you on your own. Okay, you free, nigga. Free to go where? So they was, it was like, you know, it was, like they say, tongue in cheek. It, it, you playing with us, right? So, okay, well, you can stay on the land, but now you pay rent and, and taxes on the land. You share crop. Yeah, but you ain't shared the work. So we doing all the work, so we still in slavery. So then in came these black, uh, how should we say, slave codes or black codes, or they call Jim Crow. And it evolved to the Jim Crow laws, where now uh, he free, but we're going to use that against him. Don't hire him. So then come these lo loitering type laws. Loitering mean you just 
around in public with nothing to do. So if you catch him loitering, now you can criminalize him. See, that's against the law. Hey, boy, what's your name? And they just roll up on you. Why ain't you, why ain't you employed? What you doing out here? You see, and from them laws, that's why, and it's a long-standing culture because from them kind of laws, that's why any kind of white folk with, even with no authority always want to ask you about your business and your whereabouts. And we subconsciously give it to them. I learned that. When I started learning this faith, I was for damn sure somebody going to ask me anything. Sir, can I help you? No, I'm all set. I walk into an establishment. Can I? No, I'm all, I'm good. Thank you. That's their way of saying, nigga, what you doing here? For a lot of them. Not all of them, but for a lot of them. A little slick talk. And that's a culture embedded in them where they expect you to oblige, where they get to ask you your whereabouts, ask you your private business, your name, where you're going, where, how you're going, wherever. And there's ways to tell you, we don't want you here. So they tell you, to, you in the establishment, and you looking at a, 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 a coat or something. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, that coat is uh, $522, right? That's the way nigga get out of here because you ain't got 520 So tell you a high price and get you out of the establishment. So there's a lot of games, but that's a culture embedded in them. And it's only gives, it only gets a green light because we broke God's law. So we ain't nothing but a proverb and a byword. We a joke to them. They step on us, talk about us, right? And we went into captivity. That's the 41st verse. So now let's head to Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. Okay. Before we head there, I want, there's a good one in Isaiah 5, and then we'll head to 40. So I apologize. Uh, I want to say it's the fifth chapter. Uh, where is it? Yeah, Isaiah 5. Right? Isaiah 5 and 13. Isaiah 5 and 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. You see that? So how do we end up incarcerated? How do we end up on slave ships? How do we end up oppressed? We had the knowledge. So what do you mean they had no knowledge? We didn't want the knowledge. That's what it means. We didn't want the knowledge. Okay. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to give you what you want. I ain't going to fight with you. Right? When you read in Isaiah 3, let's back it up a little bit. Oh, you men don't want to be honorable. You don't want to be fathers and husbands. You want to play games? Okay, watch what happens. So you go to Isaiah 3, right? And it speaks on, uh, I'll jump down for time's sake. Let's read this uh, 10th verse. Uh, ninth verse, I'm sorry. So Isaiah 3 and 9. The show of their countenance doth witness against them. I mean, that pride, Israel wasn't ashamed to break the law of God. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. So that was one of the things that stood out with those five cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were proud, right? They were proud. They didn't hide it. So our people became like that. They took on the nature of the heathen. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. We only hurt ourselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him. See, Isaiah, you tell the righteous, they... They're going to be all right, for they shall eat of the fruit of their doings. However, woe unto the wicked mean destruction. It shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. So we only got what we chose. As for my people, children are their oppressors. See how it's backwards? And women rule over them. See what's going on? So as a curse, it flipped. The men were supposed to be on point, right? When you read the beginning of the chapter, it spoke about the, the mighty man and the honorable man. The Lord said, I'm removing that. I'm taking that out of there. 
And what you got left? Young brothers who don't know life. And you got sisters. Right? Bearing these children. Where's the daddy? Where's the leadership? Where's the checks and balances to keep that young man to know about life, son? We're going to do it like this and like that. He's trying to figure, well, why? It's because to teach you punctuality, responsibility, accountability. See, that's what the fathers teach the young men how to be men. But you remove the men and look what you got left. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Look at these punks in the, in the neighborhood. They want to talk about all what they did in life. The guy's 16 years old. You can I, I'm serious. I had a young brother tell me years ago, right? They thought they were setting up shop. I say, hey, young brother, y'all can't be around here with all that, right? Now, I'm being nice. I could just get on out here really handle it a different way. They thought they were going to set up shop and sell drugs in front of my house. He said, man, where you been, man? We've been doing this for years. I said, boy, how old is you? You've been doing it for years. I'm about to take my belt off. See? So I started to talk that wisdom to him. Right? Few of them start walking away. He didn't expect it. Right? Because there's that little mechanism where you talk to them and they expect you to be their enemy. I'm being his brother. He didn't see that coming. I said, look, the Lord don't want none of this, brother. I'm going to tell you. Okay? And we don't want none of this for you. This life here... You're going to dead or in jail, brother. Soon as I'm talking, here come the cops. I ain't called the cops because I'm the one talking about the Lord to them. So somebody called the cops, right? And Mr. Tough, the fake tough guy, he walking away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you walking away. Well, I'm trying to tell you to stay away from that world, man. Once they got you with a record, they have a reason to block you out of society. They could blame it on you. Say, look, you's a criminal. And block you out of society. You can't get a proper job. You can't vote. You can't. That's So that's how they do them trick laws. So again, as for my people, the Lord said it. Children are their oppressors and women rule over them. What's wrong with that picture? Because there's authority. There's an authority and an order in place. And this break, breaks that trend and that order. It's a reverse. It tell you the man is the head over his wife and over his children, over his whole house. And look what you got. So this was going on back then during the time of Isaiah. Can you imagine how worse it is now? You see, which also plays in, if I want to take a, a certain uh, example, during them 60s, you still had that masculine alpha type leader amongst men. And you still had that in the home. And the enemy said, we got to remove that because we got we can't have a black man, a so-called black man, we really, Israel, as seen with any kind of respect or, or, or reverence. So we got to have him go to drugs. We got to have him uh, looked at in Hollywood that he beats his woman, right? Because all that's enchantment. Hollywood is a tool of enchantment. As a matter of fact, it was the, the magician's wand that was made out of the holly tree, the wood of the holly tree. That's what Hollywood. So they telling you, they all about that magic. That suggests that, uh, I'm trying to say two words at once. Those suggestions, the subliminal suggestions where they speak into it and they showing it. And then you play into it and it becomes a reality where therefore it wasn't, now it's played out where before that it was never reality. That movie Superfly with, with Ron O'Neill, uh, that was never reality, but you made it a reality because that enchantment of the Hollywood. So you drown out the leaders of the 60s and you uplift the youth who don't know life. They're going to generally make mistakes and they terrorize the neighborhood. And that's how the youth got criminalized. So instead of the brothers looking up to a father or looking up to a, a, a masculine leader that's upstanding, let's look to the drug dealer. He's the only one got the food. Let's look to him. He the only one got the car and the women. Let's look to him. Right? And so our people became punks and degenerates. Right? That's because that's if you 
When you go after the youth, they vulnerable because they don't know life yet. So the Lord warned us, as for my people, Isaiah 3 and 12, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to earth. So now we're getting into the, any men that was ruling them was false leaders, causing Israel to rule, uh, um, earth, excuse me, and destroy the way of thy paths. See? So our people don't see it. So now let's head to Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. And that's where you see the connection between buckwild children, mamas running the house, single mamas, and then the false teacher, the false preacher. You see why them sisters be in them, them uh, religions? Huh? It's telling you. They that lead you cause you to err. So that Lord showing you the connection between the false pr preacher, the sisters, and the, and the young brothers who have no guidance. All of that is not for your benefit. That scripture is telling you that's part of your punishment. <laughs> that is not a, a blessed thing. That's a cursed thing to have that situation. We ain't talked about the per people personally, like the woman that's single parent is somehow the devil. We saying understand how it's supposed to be as opposed to how it is now. It's backwards. And we got to get back to righteousness, Israel. And that's only through the Christ. So Isaiah 42. And um, let's read from the 18th verse. So we had Isaiah 42, right? And we want that 18 verse. So he said, hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Because the Lord said Israel is a blind nation. Who is blind? but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant. So the Lord said out of all the nations on the earth, guess who the most blind his own people, the own, his own people that he made to be perfect, his own people that he said was distinct as his servants. You the most blind. Why? Cause it's a curse. Israel one's supposed to be this way, but we chose to be this way going back centuries and is perpetuated now. Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, huh, what you say? But he hear, if not, he can't reason and understand. Even some of what we talking about today, a lot of brothers and sisters ain't trying to hear this. They still going to cut up. They still going to go to the club, make babies. Right? Children out of wedlock, children without God. No, no foundation of Christ in their home and think they're going to get a good success. No, you contribute to the problem. And then the scriptures is going up. They ain't trying to hear that. They're going to get their drink on. Right? She's still going to dress up a certain kind of way to attract a certain type of guy, a bum. Because only a bum and a punk going to be attracted to a sister dressed ungodly. A man of God going to say, she's trouble. Ain't no way I'm dealing with that. And she got a lot of learning to do before I deal with that. But a punk and, a, and an ignorant brother who don't know, have knowledge, that's what she's going to attract. So all the time she's saying, I'm looking for a good man. A good man ain't going to have you in the streets showing your body. A good man going to teach you through the Lord how you're, you, you're a treasure. You're worth something. Now act like it, sister. And he going to take control. He going to take charge. He going to stand for we equal. That's a punk. A good man's no, he going to say whatever the Lord say. Now the Lord say we not equal. The Lord say I'm in charge contingent on these scriptures. I ain't in charge contingent on me showing you how to break God law. But I'm in charge contingent on you being a godly man. Now I need a godly woman. Now, you either can, can can run with me and we run this race together or you can keep it moving, sister. Plenty of fish out in the sea. There's plenty. Listen, the Lord, the scriptures tell you to a good man is given a good woman. So you don't want to, you know, fit that bill. Listen, the Lord has sent somebody to have that fit that bill. Does that mean you meant for a loser? Because I'm trying to win. You see, that's how you got to do. But see, brothers... They become a slave to the rhythm, if you understand what I'm saying. They get whooped. We know the word that goes in front of it. We got to be more honorable, brother. 
You got to show a sister, listen, sis, nah, I, I'm turned off from all that. I ain't, you don't move and shake me, push my buttons because you showing cleavage or thigh or leg or your navel, your, your midsection. Hey, listen, that's a dishonor to our people. But see, that's not how you come across. You got to let the Lord say it. The Lord's and let your behavior say it. And, she, and if she meant for you to be a, a godly woman in the Lord, she's going to try to find out where's the disconnect and, and where, how can I change because I'm really interested in this guy. But he, he seemed to be not enamored with all this clownery suit I got on. Fake hair, fake eyes, fake face. Right? Not because the Lord with them. So now you're supposed to be with them. A lot of change got to go on and change for the better. And you be thankful that the two people was obedient to the law of God. Now you get a proper marriage with proper children. Raise them in the Lord. Okay. All right. So Isaiah 42. And let's read that uh, 21, 21st verse. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law, not religion, and make it honorable. And that's through the Christ. That's how he did it. But this people is robbed and spoiled, right? Robbed and spoiled, meaning the spoils of war, meaning you can see the effects of being militarily overtaken and occupied and put in captivity. And, and, and they control everything. They are all of them snared in holes, meaning we full of sabotage. The enemy come up with new things is always to hurt you. Legalized drugs, that's to hurt you, but we can't see it. And they are hid where? In prison houses. We fill up the prisons. Going back centuries, man. America, when they did the survey, that's what said that, that 13th Amendment is a good documentary. They said, look, um, based on the population, the world population, and based on the ratio to who's incarcerated and who's not, um, United States of America got the largest percentage of incarceration, and it's you, so-called blacks and Hispanics, God's people. Because the Lord called it. You hid in prison houses. You, you've been overwhelmed and overtooken by an enemy force, and you can't see it. They are for a prey and none delivereth. Nobody say, yeah, we need to do a better job with them Israelites. The United Nations don't speak up for you. None of these presidents speak up for you. Obama for eight years was one of the worst. So none deliver because your deliverance is meant to come through Christ. Right? Yahweh in Hebrew or Yahashua, Yahashua, the, the, the Savior. For a spoil and none saith restore. They ain't trying to, because they benefiting from your downfall. Why would they say restore? Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Right? Who's going to pay attention? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. See? Therefore he poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. Look at our people. They still haven't figured out the, the, the solution to the question. They get further and further away from the Most High. These religions have been the main one of the main things to help you to get further and further away from the Most High. They aid and abet your sins by having you on, under a false Most High and a false Christ. They tell you, do what you want. God is in your heart. No, nah. So it was the most high who said, listen, you don't want to follow me. That's fine. I ain't going to force you. But there still remains a penalty. And we've been getting jacked up all this time. So the Lord calling us to righteousness, Israel, so we can get out of this predicament. Okay. When you go to Isaiah 51, right? Isaiah 51. And about the 20th verse, Isaiah 51 and 20, it says, thy sons have fainted. When it say fainted, man, they done gave up. Look at the youth. 
It's written all over their face. Their whole countenance, man. They done gave up. Got the pants off the back of their behind, which is, is a signal to be a sodomite. They full of uh, drugs. They high all the time. They crashing up everybody on the roads. They lie to the sisters. Tell them anything they want to hear. Then once they get what they want, they gone. That baby ain't mine. He with the next girl. She crying. So then she builds up a hatred and a resentment against men. So now she a lesbian. Listen, we done seen this. I ain't lying. We done seen a sister get taken advantage by a brother. So bad. He done left over about five, six kids. He with another girl. Get her a bunch of kids. Now he done mess with Esau. He with an Edomite woman. And put a ring on the Edomite woman finger. After he done used up the sisters. Now he get older. Gray hairs. He with an Edomite woman. She looked like mud too. These kids is destroyed. The children. They on all kind of uh, drugs. Riddling all kinds of stuff. And she said men is dogs. And she going to mess with another woman. Now, how the kids going to deal with all that? You see with the environment that was set by the, the, the bad decision of the sister getting with the wrong guy. So you get with a faint brother who ain't got no sense. Yeah, get ready. So the spirit on our young brothers, they lost the courage, man. That's why when these brothers be fighting and shooting each other, all that is big time signs of fear. Men don't act like that. Men discuss their disagreements. And when they, when they can't come to a resolution and never come upon their mind to end another brother's life and have that man's mama in the funeral home because you got a mama. Men don't get down like that. But punks do because they fainted, man. They gave up the courage. They gave up the courage to, 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 to bear and forbear with one another, to show that love, to understand when you're wrong. Right? So thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets, right? They're on the corners as a wild bull in the net, meaning no control. They're out of control, right? So that wild bull, they put him in the net. He wild. And he fighting and bucking harder because he can't figure out why he's in that net. He can't figure out why he's in that predicament. So he buck harder. And that's what's going on with these brothers. They don't have the men in place to show them and hold it down. Look, brother, we ain't doing that. Okay, now you're going to get out this bed. You're going to do your chores. And you're going to like it. Man don't work, he don't eat. And you show, these fathers show them that from young. And some of these boys get it. Some of these boys are more lazy than other them. You ride them harder. And you pray. And through the mixture of prayer and patience... And nourishing that child in the way he should go, he'll never depart. See? So these brothers like a wild bull in the net, not understanding their condition. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. That's what we're seeing in the streets. That's who's filling up them prisons, man. Brothers who don't understand the Most High. They don't understand their life. They think that the hood should be uh, uh, Beirut. Right? Just a whole <laughs> war war scene. But you making it that way. It don't have to be that way, but you making it that way. And then pretending to your yourself that it's that it's like that, so I might as well play along with my condition. No, you add into the problem. So therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith the Lord uh thus saith thy Lord the Lord. And thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling. See, that would say fear. They moving in fear. They just act tough, but they really scared. Years ago, men, not to say we subscribe to it, but the fact that there was an understanding not to take a life, men knuckled up. Somebody went too far and they needed a beating. They knuckled up and it was a done with. That man get to live. These punks, they don't, they scared to get scraped so they can pull a gun. I remember telling a guy years ago, he pulled a gun on me. I was younger. We about the same age. We, we friends now. 
So I want to say that first. Uh, but he pulled a gun on me years ago. And I said, man, you ain't nothing but a punk, man. Right? I'm ready to beat him with that gun. I wasn't fully repented back then. And uh, he said, yeah, but I'm a punk with a gun, though. When he said that, I said, okay. <laughs> he telling on himself, he's a punk with a gun, huh? Okay, yeah. All right, brother. I'm going to see you. And the Lord had it where it's a good thing I didn't do what I wanted to do. And through another friend, uh, he calmed the situation down. And then eventually, when I saw the guy uh, sometimes after that, because he was cool with a, a, a friend of mine. Um, now, that's a fourth brother involved. Um, but a friend of mine was his best friend. And he was trying to mediate, like, nah, chill out, man, I don't want this, want this for y'all. He told him, put the gun away. And eventually we became boys, you know, not super close, but enough where we friends, man, we not enemies, man. I just saw that brother like a month, three weeks ago. I ain't seen him in a minute. I saw him three weeks ago, man. We hugging, we laughing about some stuff. See, but they be in fear, Israel. And when somebody's in fear, they dangerous like a wounded animal. And that's what you got in the streets. They talk tough, but they really scared their children. And it take for the Lord to do what? Take out of our hand the cup of trembling. Even the dregs of the cup of my fury, thou shalt no more drink it again. So this, these curses were temporary, Israel. The nations would love it to be permanent, but we, we God's people. This was... The Lord punishing us, and then he was to bring us back through the Messiah, the Christ. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, so it's going to switch. Which have said to thy soul, bow down. See what society has said to the young, to the youth? Bow down. You have no chance but to do it the way we say. So they've said it in so many ways. They done said bow down with these so-called criminal reform acts. Nixon put one together. The Clintons put one together. And all these so-called prison rules and, and criminality, uh, criminal uh, laws and all that was to take advantage of you. Three strikes you out type law. That was to remove uh, the males from the home. Also, these heavy laws against the crack cocaine in like the late 80s, early 90s, you see. Now, Clinton came back and ap apologized, but what that supposed to do? What's that doing for, for the families that in the generations that's been de destroyed? And so what they were doing, they were doing like a, a, a 10 to 1, where for every ounce of powdered cocaine that a white boy get caught with, and he get probation or something, then uh, that same... Uh, weight in crack cocaine, rock cocaine, you get 10 years per rock. So it was, it was a system and it's still a system full of bigotry, full of hatred, full of personal targeting, a personal agenda and a targeting of the black and Hispanic youth, God's people. Now, if you want to be like a saying Isaiah, blind and don't see it, we understand the Lord called it for it happened. But if you want to repent and learn something and get your act together with these scriptures and raise your children right, it's time. It's been, it's high time. And this Bible explained it all. And I say, man, now I see, man, I couldn't put my finger on it. The Lord did this and the Lord going to remove it if we get right. We got to repent. So 23, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over. See, that's that white supremacy. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground. That's why you're dealing in, uh, now they done legalized drugs, you done laid down. You ain't figured out what the enemy doing. And as the street to them that went over. I'm a minority. You don't ever call yourself a minority. You bowing down, man. You saying they the majority and you on the bottom. How a country that say we all equal, we all free, and then you turn around and make and let them tell you you minor to their major. How are you equal and free? Right? And we just playing along because we know we ain't equal and, and free. We above them. 
That's the real deal. And the Lord going to bring a realization to that when he sent his Christ with a host of mighty angel and put that whoop tail on these heathen. And he's going to put a whoop tail on his own people who didn't repent. So it's time to repent, Israel. Learn your knowledge and wisdom and understanding that made you wise. And get back with the, your creator, the most high God, through his anointed son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We call you Hawashai, I mean the Savior. See, they got another one in here when you go to uh, Lamentations 2. Right, Lamentations, the second chapter. I said I would read something in, in, in about how the people was conforming to the Greek culture. But uh, I might read that in a minute. So Lamentations, I'm sorry, it's after Jeremiah. The second chapter, the 15th verse. Lamentations 2 and 15. He say, all that pass by clap their hands at thee. Right? They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty? The joy of the whole earth? See, the heathen, they know who we are. They know who we are. But there's an attitude like, how could these be God's people? Look at them, right? So it's that psychology where they aided and abetted in your downfall. They somehow got convenient amnesia while you're on the bottom when they part of it. But that's a little psychological thing because if you can degrade and down others, that make yourself uh, look good. And that's what uh, people who hate themselves, that, see, that's a whole nother class right there. These people hate themselves. They're not happy with themselves, so they got to down you. And we play into it. And so the scriptures called it. They huh, clap their hand. Look at these Negro. Look at these specks. Look at the, uh, uh, uh. right? That's how they do. Right? Now, the Lord don't call you Negroes and speck. He call you a chosen people. So he said, all thine what? Enemies have opened their mouth against thee. There was a time when they said, this is a wise and understanding people. But they couldn't wait to say, they, they, was help, they was just hoping you left them commandments so they can open their mouth against you. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we look for. We have found, we have seen, we've been waiting for you silly Israelites to follow our gods. For you silly Israelites to follow our agenda and policies. The Lord hath done that which he had devised. He hath fulfilled his word that he hath commanded in the days of old. He hath thrown down and hath not pitied. And hath caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. And he hath set up the horn of thine adversary. So you want to know how these heathen got over us? We allowed it. We forced the Lord's hand. And the Lord said, okay, you love these heathen and they gods so much, them little false gods. I must let you see how they really get down. And these heathen rose up one by one, right? And throughout history, Israel lost the promised land. We got split into two nations. Then it got worse from there. And we ended up in captivity in all nations. Now, one of the captivities... I said I would read it, so I'm going to read it. Okay. Before I read it, let's head to Psalms 83. Psalms 83. Just to kind of give you a premise. So these scriptures been in this Bible, but they didn't teach you this in these lying religions. They teach you how to be subservient. Right? How to be complicit with your own downfall. That's what these religions do. The minute they got that false Christ on that wall... And you got a black minister telling you the words of the Bible, but he, you linking it to that false Christ, which means it's false. It is not the scriptures. It is a script. You got shook. Right? So Psalms 83, it says, Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Tumult means a, a noisome noise for battle. I mean, they're at war with us, but we sleep. And they had, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head, so they rise up in pride. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. So the prison industrial complex, the rap game, the music industry, this is all crafty counsel. 
they enter witchcraft, okay? They enter the witchcraft and the music, just like Hollywood. So if Hollywood is on to the, into the, the witchcraft, so is the music. And they know that dealing with certain entities, you can use, you can speak to things, right? You, now what you're doing is you're speaking on the microphone and you're speaking these words, trying to bring the words into power. That's called enchantment. And so by speaking these words into power, it only has power over the weak, meaning the youth. Because the youth can't, a lot of time they, if they don't have that guidance, they're going to get enchanted. And so now these songs glorify sex and violence. These songs glorify broken homes and, and children out of wedlock. These songs glorify showing your body. These songs glorify you uh, looking at sisters like a sexual conquest, selling drugs, shooting your brother down. So they speaking these things over the mic and it's enchantment and sorcery to the listener. So it's embedded in his subconscious. So now when he, after listening to gangster rap and thug life and all this other crazy stuff, he goes out of his house and sees his brother under that spell. They know exactly what they're doing. That's that crafty counsel. And the, and the rap game done hooked up with the prison industrial complex, the private corporations, and they embed together in Wall Street making money by filling up them prisons based on you listening to some songs. Yeah. But when you got a father in the house and a mother that as a team, there's less chance of the child going that direction. So this is why they got to have the youth where it's, oh, it's better to be by yourself, sister. And you're seeing what the sisters is raising. Brothers who wear skinny jeans, no socks, pink shirts, and their hand upside down, they are feminine. But society's telling them, you single sisters doing a great job. You don't need no man. You strong and independent. And you look at it, you're really weak by yourself because that ain't how the Lord designed it, right? And then the sisters resent the truth because then they think you're saying something about them like they the full cause. No, 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 they not the full cause of the youth. It takes two, brother. It takes two, sister. So it takes for the men who hold the greater responsibility to get themselves together. And keep their zipper up and get their mind on the most high in Christ and get your mind out of this foolish clown world where you a clown, super clown. And all you can provide for a woman is sex. You ain't got nothing else to offer. That's a clown. Now, I know these songs and told you you great. And how are you great? It's people, legends in their own mind. Christ is great because he was for his people. How are you great? You for yourself. And when you finish, a lot of people don't even take a bath. You're just full of folly, a lot of our people. We got to learn something, Israel. Okay, we just, we, we, we playing into these stereotypes when the Lord got this great wisdom. He's telling us these heathen have taken crafty counsel. They into them think tanks. I can tell you one of the think tanks that has shape molded the rap game and they not even in America. They in England called the Tavistock Institute, right? The Tavistock Institute of uh, mental, whatever they want to call it. Got some long name. They over in England setting the trends. And you think your boy, uh, Jigga Wigga set the trend. Nah, your enemy in them think tanks say in the seventies, Promote the drug dealer. Name the movie Superfly. Right? And let them be like exaggerated over the top. Big high platform shoes. Right? He a clown. Big coats with lapels. Right? Have his wit, his hair in an effeminate fashion because that's that Willie Lynch stuff where you matriarchal instead of through your father, masculine and learn how to be a man. So all the bros perm in their hair with a hat and a trench leather trench coat and you super fly and all super fly do that movie got brothers dead or in them cemeteries.
That's how they did it. And so another uh, uh, good documentary called Bastards of the Party, and it, it speaks to the correlation, correlation of how they had to get rid of the masculine brothers and have them under a punk vibration with the drug dealers, right? Look at the drug dealer as the leader of the community. That's what they did. And brothers played into that crafty council. So they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. See that? That's the end game to get rid of you, man, your existence. They even go as far as to give you their woman to water you down and wipe you out where you're not strong with your woman, your people. For they have consulted together with one consent, one agreement. They are confederate against thee. So they're against the most high, so they come at the most high people. First name on the list, the Tabernacles of Edom. That's the biblical name for the so-called European. He the first one on the list. And Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines and inhabitants of Tyree. Then it says, Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, meaning Moab and Ammon. And as it reads on, David say in the spirit to get rid of them, man. Don't let their plans be successful against your holy children. See, so men and godly men understood the game. And it's our job to pass this game and this truth, I should say, down to the children. But you can't pass it down if you don't live it. So we got to get ourselves right. We get ourselves right, get the sisters right. Only a willing participant type sisters. Sisters that, that they, you know, they somehow into them or whatever else, or they traumatize and refuse to get healed through Christ. You, you can't really work with that. But the Lord, do the, he the matchmaker. He fix all things. And together when the brothers and the sisters come together under the foundation of the Christ, we could raise proper children till Christ come and get us out of here. Okay, but one thing we can't do is stay sleep, stay foolish, and not teach the youth. So here's an example during the time of the Greeks, and I'll end with this. Where uh, I'll go to Second Maccabees, I want to say the sixth chapter. Uh, right, is it the sixth chapter? Mm-hmm. Mm hmm that's it. The fourth chapter is a good one as well. I said six, it might be four. Yeah, fourth chapter. That's a little more descriptive. So 2 Maccabees, the fourth chapter in the Apocrypha. You see some, some of the crafty counsel, right? 2 Maccabees 4 and 7. But after the death of Seleucus, right? When Antiochus called Epiphanes took the kingdom. So there was more than one Antiochus. So what they would do, that would be like a title. They even named a city called Antioch after this family of Edomites. So Antiochus the fourth or Antiochus Epiphanes. And then his son after him was Antiochus Eupator, right? E-U-P-A-T-O-R. So that was like a title for this Greek family coming out of the Seleucid dynasty, the Seleucids, right? They were a Greek family who took control of, once the Greeks ruled the world, they divided up the kingdom and they fought each other over territory, but... This group was over the Holy Land, right? Oppressing us. So it says they took the kingdom. Jason, the brother of Onias, labored underhand to be high priest. So Jason was an Israelite brother, a sellout. And he worked underhand to remove his brother Onias, who was a righteous man, right? Who was about the law of God. And he wanted to make an affinity with the Greeks. So he worked underhand, get his brother out of there so he could rule. As a sellout. So it says, like, be like a, a, a go between. So he said, he promised unto the king by intercession 303 score talents of silver 
and another revenue 80 talents. Besides this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise. Now, these places of exercise was like early, what you call universities, right? Where you exercise your mind, body, and spirit, mm -hmm. right? To what? For the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen and to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antioch. And so when somebody changed your name, you are Israelite, your mainland, your, your capital city of Jerusalem, you got to sell out, say, let's get and let's wipe away the existence of who you used to be, who you are, and put a whole different persona. You Antiochians, a made up name off of this guy, Antiochus. You're really an Israelite. And that's what we tell our people. You're not an American. You're not an Afro-American. Those are all names to wipe out who you truly are. That the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. And so they go after who? The youth. Which when the king had granted, he had gotten into his hand the rule. So now he put this cell out, eager to be a uh, 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 Greek. He forthwith brought his own nation. This brother Jason brought his own nation to the Greekish fashion. See what he's doing? And the royal privileges granted a special favor to the Jews by the means of John, the father of Eupolemus, who went ambassador to Rome for amity and aid, he took away. So he took away the former covenants and peace treaties where Israel can keep the scriptures and don't have to worry about war. He got rid of that. And putting down the governments which were according to the law, he brought up a new customs against the law. For he built gladly, see, this sellout was eager, a place of exercise under the tower itself. So before we go forward, who do the enemy want in charge? They wouldn't want Onias in charge. They would love to have a brother like this in charge because what's happening? He going to help the enemy bring the youth to the Greekish fashion or the ways of the heathen and brought the chief young men under his subjection and made them wear a hat. So them hats getting into them idolatrous type things, including some of them hats today in these universities. You get them square hats with the different color tassels, and they all got different meaning to Greek gods. Okay. Now, such was the height of Greek fashions and increase of heathenish manners through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch and no high priest, that the priest had no courage to serve any more at the altar. See, so the youth was no longer about the Most High. And the upcoming priest, they said, man, we, the Most High, I'm about to get paid. But despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hasten, they were quick in a hurry, to be partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise. Right? The Lord is unlawful. You following, you, you butt naked in, in, in the arenas, right? After the game of discus called them forth. You throwing around a, a frisbee butt naked for the Greek gods. When you was a priest following the law formally. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, meaning disrespecting their people. But liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. Look at that problem. They got a spirit on them of enchantment where the Greeks could do no wrong. Somehow Zeus is God now. And Athena, Athena has wisdom now. We fell a prey to this foolishness because we chose to. But notice how the king granted him leave because he said, this is the dummy that's going to trick the youth for us. So think about the rap game in the, in the, in the music industry. And look at, the, look at how these brothers that they promote to be uh, somehow mus musical prowess, the Jay-Z's and the, and the, uh, the, the gangster rap and all. Jay-Z constantly telling him, Jesus can't save you. That's what he's saying in his lyrics. They love these type of sellout brothers. And the youth, don't they don't have the wherewithal because the fathers ain't in the home. And so they become uh, absent fathers. They smoking weed right with their kids. Right? He 28, his kid is 11. 
He's smoking weed with the kid. Come on, man. So brothers sell out and it affects the youth. And who win? The enemy. So the Greeks could do no wrong because you were under the spell. So what happened? By reason whereof sore calamity came upon them, the Lord got them. You want to sell your soul? You're going to get God. For they had them to be their enemies and avengers whose custom they followed so earnestly. Man, these people oppressed your people. You're supposed to avenge the name of God in, in, the, in the name of your people. You following their customs like they great. And unto whom they desire to be like in all things. And look at our people. The young generation get worse and worse. They wear pajamas to school. When the scriptures tell you what you wear, it shows what you are. How are you going to school to learn something? You, your, your garments show that you sleep. An enemy. I was at, listen. I was at uh, one of the facilities. Supposed to be a school. The guy's playing YouTube videos. I thought you was a teacher, man. He playing YouTube videos, letting somebody else teach. And he said, yeah, see, because China and see and such and such and the communism. And I seen brothers and sisters in that class. And I saying, see, this is why we don't learn nothing. What the brother need to know about some China and some communism? He don't even know who he is. He don't even know why he's in the predicament he is. This is by design. So these children get uninterested. Then they act out. Then you label them as a bad child. Then that bad child takes on that enchantment because you spoke it over him. He plays into the bad child stuff. He acts out. He gets arrested. Now he's in the system. Now he's part of uh, being incarcerated and all the things that come with that. So now he has no hope. He done lost his courage. The society and the system said, bow down. Where well, the Lord say, stand up. That's what we're telling you tonight. Because the Lord's switching this thing. So 17 verse, for it is not a light thing, meaning an easy thing or, or something that's uh, benign, to do wickedly against the laws of God, but the time following shall declare these things. So we'll end it there. But the criminalization of our youth is not by coincidence, it's not a happenstance that just tend to happen. You got powers that be in high places that are getting marching orders from Satan the devil and they're allowed to deal with our people a certain kind of way. And then it takes two because our people who refuse to repent to the Lord God under the name of Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, we fall into this stuff, right? We fall prey, we make ourselves vulnerable as a target because we lack the knowledge, wisdom, understanding to see the enemy miles away. We see him when you deal with the Lord. When you don't deal with the Lord, you fall prey to the folly and the, and the, and the tactics. And so, Lord willing, I'll try to put some of the uh, sources that I quoted during this class, like that 13th Amendment. Uh, there's another book called Slavery by Another Name. That's the name of the title, Slavery by Another Name. Uh, there's also... Um, some other things I had mentioned, I might try to just put them in the comment section and you could check them on your own uh, some other time. OK, uh, I mentioned a, a different documentary called Bastards of the Party. OK, when it spoke about how they, they silenced the, the black militant leader and they promoted the drug dealer in the uh, communities and they switched it. And then now the youth started thinking the drug dealer was the guy to follow. So I'll see if I can put them links up. Uh, but let's uh, end with the prayer. All right. And so, Heavenly Father, in the name of Christ, we give thanks for your holy word. We give thanks for your salvation and mercies that we have hope in these last days. And thou shalt turn all things back to righteousness and thou shalt redeem the righteous. But thou shalt bring punishment and heavy judgment upon the wicked who thought thou seest not. All praises to the Most High in the name of Christ who keepeth his covenants and keepeth his promises. Let all the earth rejoice in thy righteousness and truth. Thank you, Father, in the name of Christ. Protect us with your holy hedge. Amen. All right, Israel, go with God. I'm your brother, Brother Aram, who preached the Apostles' Doctrine, which is another way of saying the gospel of peace. Go, with, go in peace and go with God. All right, Shalom.